This week on Kentucky Field, from fire comes life. We'll show you exactly what that means and what the department is doing to make it happen. Next, we're taking a trip to Western Kentucky to hunt the state's largest rabbits, swampers. That's a good one there. Then, we find ourselves on Del Hollow Lake with professional kayak angler, Got one. Christine Fisher. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. First St. Leo. Yeah, we're here to get the keeper. Here it goes. Oh. Boom. Oh. 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 Wow, that happened. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. When most people hear the word fire, they think of something very destructive. But if you ask some of our biologists, they'll tell you with fire comes new life. So we're at the Taylorsville Lake Wildlife Management Area. This is called the Briar Ridge Unit of Taylorsville Lake. It's a 1,800 acre section of the management area. Today, we're gonna be putting fire to 580 acres of that area. Okay, we use uh, drip torches that have a mixture of diesel and gasoline. It's on the end has a wick, so they light the wick with the match and it drips lit fuel onto the ground. It has a little loop nozzle on the end. However you set your drip setting, there's an air vent on the drip torch. Fire uh, it serves multiple purposes. It encourages growth of the warm season grasses in our fields. And it also will help us fight invasive species. We have six crews total. There are four igniter crews that are putting fire on the ground. We have a support crew and we have a, a forestry crew that is suppression fire along our fire breaks. And then we also have a crew that is on the water that will be uh, igniting the woods from the boat. today at Taylorsville Lake uh, shooting flares off the boat to uh, try to help the progression of a prescribed fire we have going on here. The number of flares we're going to shoot off today will probably range somewhere between 50 to 100 depending on uh, the spread of the fire uh, as, as we go and how much of the fire backs down. A lot of these animals will run for cover and they'll hide. Deer and rabbits and turkey and quail and squirrels will all be able to run away and they'll get out ahead of the fire. And it's real common whenever we're burning on even private lands or public lands, you'll start seeing those animals start moving out and advance to the fire before the fire even gets to them. It's pretty hilly terrain, and it could be potentially dangerous to send the crew up and down a hill. Once a crew gets an area burnt, they will backfire down towards the lake and the crew from the water, they will set the flares. They will reach from the shoreline. They'll put fire up to the flares to match them together. We have some students from EKU. The students, they all have their training in fighting fire and prescribed burns, and most of them is their first time out, so they're more going to be shadowed and, and mentored on the burn. Yeah, my major is uh, wildlife management with a minor in biology. I'm out here today because uh, I'm red card certified and I love putting fire on the ground. 
purpose of this fire is to increase oak hickory regeneration and open up some of the woodlands for, for more small game habitat. You will be increasing forest floor cover for smaller creatures like squirrels. Uh, in the woodlands and in the open areas within the woodlands, you'll be increasing early successional habitat for things like rabbits and turkey poles. Really, all, all the animals will benefit from this. You'll be increasing woody browse for things like deer. A lot of the animals here in the eastern U.S. have evolved on a fire landscape, and uh, they've come to exist, in some cases rely, on management activities. And prescribed fire is one of the methods that allows us to manage the largest chunks of property at one time. Well, this is beneficially it restores the, the environment back to an oak hickory setting that we're looking for. We're looking for a productive forest, nice healthy grass fields, and it helped game and non-game wildlife both. I'm here today with Sergeant Cravens to talk about a new hunting opportunity, and that's nighttime rifle coyote hunting. Tell me a little bit about the seasons and what we need to know. Nighttime season is December 1st through March 31st and that is with shotgun or rifle. You can continue to use the shotgun through May 31st. Rifle has to be 6.5 millimeter or smaller in caliber and you can hunt them at night using either one of those with lights or other equipment such as night vision or thermal to make wildlife visible at night. There's some things you need to know though this is private land only. That is correct. It's only on private land with the rifle. You can still hunt public land with a shotgun. Whether you're hunting public or private with the shotgun, it is no single projectile ammunition. And then as far as public land, an individual would need to check the hunting guide to make sure the particular wildlife management area or area that they're going to hunt on, public land they're going to hunt on, is open to fur bear hunting. When there's other seasons in, there could be conflicts as well. So the season comes in and goes out based on other hunting seasons as Correct. well, right? Correct. In a county or area where there is a firearm season that's open for deer or elk, then the night coyote season is out during that point. For instance, we've got the late muzzleloading season coming up. While that is in, you will not be able to hunt coyotes at night with a rifle. So this is something that our predator hunters have been asking for for some time. There's a great opportunity for this, but you really need to read the regs and always focus on safety. Well, that's the number one thing is safety. I would recommend an individual go out to the area that they're gonna be hunting in during daylight hours. Take a look at the surroundings, see if there's any livestock in the fields, check where there's any barns, any equipment parked out there, houses. People are used to calling in and we encourage that. If you hear a high-powered rifle shot during the middle of the night, you know, we've always encouraged people to call in on that. So let the landowner know, hey, I'm gonna be out there tonight hunting. And so if they hear a high-powered rifle shot at three o'clock in the morning and wakes them up, they say, oh, well, that's, you know, such and such. I remember I, they told me they were probably gonna be out here hunting tonight. Good communication is gonna be very key with this, but I'm super excited about this opportunity. I'm sure that some of our small game and some of our pet populations will be happy as well. I'm sure they will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For me, winter means rabbit season. And if you want to see some big rabbits, head west in search of swampers. This is Mary Ann. How is she? She's four. Four, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mary Ann is Gracie's daughter. Okay. Dot is Mary Ann's daughter. Okay. She's ready, huh? She don't look it right now, but she, she don't is. look it, but I bet you turn her loose. That's where it goes. She yeah, she's gonna be ready. We we'll get ready to cut them loose. I'm just gonna say a quick prayer, real quick, to get it started. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for getting everybody here safe. We thank you for being able to get out here and enjoy your great outdoors. Thank you for camaraderie. Watch over us, keep us safe, watch over our hounds. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's get her done. All right. It's funny watching a dog like that, feeling like he's being left out. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, it looks like we've jumped our first rabbit and got our first rabbit down. Man, I believe that is a swamp rabbit. That's a good sign, yeah, it's swamper. Yeah, we said we was far enough west. Come here, girls, come here, girls. That's a really good sized rabbit, look at that. Come here, girls. <laughs> Nice job. Thank you. All right, so this little man said he wanted to become a competition champion rabbit hauler. Well, you're gonna get started with a swamp rabbit right off the bat, how about that? All 
How's that feel? That feels like success right there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the dog said, hey, I'm moving on. There's more rabbits than that, fellas. <laughs> Don't get down. That rabbit dragged you down? <laughs> <laughs> he was high stepping just for a second. <laughs> I don't think they got it. <laughs> they got a little ice back out on the range. <laughs> Stay that way, because they didn't get it. There you go. <laughs> nice shot. Stay right there where, where the dogs will get it. Right here it is. Right here it is, girls. Right here it is, girls. Right here it is, girls. Yeah, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> there it is, there it is, there it is. Yeah, 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 there it is, there it is, there it is. Good girl. Oh, boy, that was a heck of a chase. You boys had hit it. Did y'all see it when it came out? I had a gimme because it was crawling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was hit a little bit. Oh, nice shot, Paul. I saw it. When you said you right here, I, yeah. I was kind of looking this way, trying to spread out, and I saw it come through. You put a good shot on it. Good job, girls. Good job. Beautiful. Good girls. Where was he at? Oh, he come out of there like a rocket. I mean, that rabbit, <laughs> that ears lay. <laughs> he only touched the ground once between the thicket and about right here. <laughs> Get him, girls. Get him, girls. Let's get one more. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's just like Red Rover. They know where the weak link is. They're going to run right by Darren all day. <laughs> Got one down. I'll tell you what, every rabbit we've, that's been killed has been big rabbits. Did you see that thing? I might need to be tagged and telecheck. <laughs> Jeff, you done talked this boy into working. <laughs> what, what's your limit? He said three was his limit. <laughs> just jump that one. New rabbit? Yeah, she just jumped that rabbit. Is that a rabbit right there? I think it's the dog's white. You sure? Right there, Jeff. Dad? Did you hear that voice change? I was like, she just jumped that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> That's a good one there. That's pretty good. That's a kangaroo. You ever seen such a rabbit? Look at that joker. It's <laughs> a good one there. It was slipping right down the edge of this, this uh, ditch right here, right on the top side of it. Had to shoot through some pretty thick wires. <laughs> Now look, right there's what it was dead. Now watch him turn back around. Let's hope. <laughs> what the heck happened? <laughs> look, Tracy, like, oh, you guys are going the wrong way. Yep. Right here, right here. Come here. Hey, 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 hey. Come here, Marianne. Come here, Marianne. Here, here, here. Right here, right here. Good girl. Right here. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Come here, Gracie. <laughs> That's crazy girl again. Get ready. Rabbit's coming at us, boys. <laughs> did you see that? Have a little trouble, did you? <laughs> oh, man. Did you get it? Doesn't sound like you're pretty confident. Just boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. You know, this isn't the type of area that I would expect to be seeing swamp rabbits up here, but it's about all we've jumped. And it's crazy, too, because the dogs ain't really been able to run them, because they, the couple I've seen, they, them rabbits are literally just crawling. Yeah. And then dogs come up on them, they'll take off a little bit. And man, they've held tight. You know, we talked about the other day, I'd love to fish. I'd rather fish than eat, but man, that's right here, it's hard to do. Did you get it? Oh, did you? All right. Right here he is. Right here, right here, right here. Ed, 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 right here, right here. Look at there, look at there, look at there, look at there. That's him, that's him, that's him. Come here, Ed. There it is, Dottie. Yeah, there it is. I love, love, love listening to these dogs. When they get excited and oh, yeah. they start carrying on, and it gets me excited. I enjoy it. I can do it all day, every day, really. Well, we get six bunnies. Mm -hmm. Do we have any cottontails? I'm curious to see. I think that one I shot might have been a cottontail. Yeah. But I think the rest of them may be swampers. Biggins, look at that. All right. He's like, come on now. Come on now. Don't you share? Don't you share? Compare the size of that rabbit to that dog there. 
If I'd have got a lemon, I'd have had to run a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> get them out of here. Look at them. Come on now. Well, let's go get some summer sausage. That's always the best way to end a good rabbit hunt, isn't I it? I ain't got no complaints. Here we go. <laughs> let's go do that. <laughs> Most people associate kayak fishing with summertime stream fishing, but in the wintertime you can hit the big water in search of big fish. So Christine, where are you from originally? I am from the little town of Weeping Water, Nebraska. Nebraska. Got about 800 people, 801, uh, something like that. What got you into fishing? Is there a really good lake to fish there local? Oh no, um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> oh heck no. No, um, my whole family, oop, there wasn't right there, hold on a second. Get a bite? Yeah. Got one. Oh, it feels like a good one. Yep, good fish. Big small mouth. Woo. Very nice. Woo. You found that grass edge. <laughs> Man, look at that beautiful fish. Very nice. I tell you what, that's what Del Hollow is known for right there. That's a healthy fish. God, love it. Uh oh, here we go. Finally got one hooked up here. And you didn't flip the kayak on the hook sack. That's a that's a huge <laughs> hey, I, win. I've got a fish on it. I'm still dry. That's a that's a win-win for today. <laughs> now appreciate the intimacy of that fish being so close to you right now. That's what it's all about. Oh yeah. Look you there. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it though. Beautiful smallmouth fish. So at what point in time did you decide that you were gonna do the majority of your fishing out of a kayak? <laughs> well, about the time I looked at the price of a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I was in my early 20s. I, I bought one. There was a flyer for a little local kayak fishing tournament. And that kind of got me into it. Um, I think I spent like 800 bucks on my first fishing kayak. It was a used one I bought online. It's kind of taken off since and it's allowed me to travel all over the country. I can handle it by myself and I can fish any water I want, which is really nice. You know, some of the small rivers and creeks, big water like St. Clair. You fish a lot of big water, don't you? I do, yeah, I, I absolutely do. Um, a lot of my tournaments are on, on, you know, giant bodies of water. There we go. It, it definitely, you have to really do some map study prior to jumping on a lake like this. We can't just run spots as easily. You're limited a little more on how far you, you're willing to go, and you, you gotta watch the weather too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've been in some pretty inclement weather on this thing. I would probably consider myself um, a multi-species angler with musky. Musky fishing is my passion, um, always oh. has been. Oh my gosh! I grew up fishing muskie, pike, walleye up north. Nebraska is not necessarily known for your bass fishing, but I'm very active on the national kayak bass tournament scene. And so I've been doing that for three years now. Active is one way to say it. Extremely successful is another one. I mean, you've won your fair share too, haven't you? I, I've had a pretty good year this year. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was really consistent last year. Um, I did win a local tournament last year and I had several top five national level finishes, but I didn't win a big one. And this year I won three, so that was that's kind of that was kind of a neat deal for me. So people who think okay, tur tournament style fishing in a kayak, how does that work? Because you you don't have a live well, you're not taking fish in, but you you do it on a different method than what most people are used to, and that's a overall inches, right? That's right. Yeah, it's, which is really good for conservation because we do catch photo release on this little measuring board I have back here. You measure the fish, you've got a, a predetermined identifier, and that fish goes right back in the water. Gotcha. Okay. It's great for the sport, and it's great, you know, those fish go right back and they're not out of the water for a long time. Uh oh, here, I got a bite right now. This fish here is going to pull me out there, out to the ocean. 
Yep, we'll take you for a ride. <laughs> That's a good that, one here. That looks now. like a good one. It's a good fish. You might want to use the net on that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful fish. That's a 20, I what bet. What do you know? I think I just landed a four and a half pounder in a kayak. This might be a first <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> this is a good fish here. And I tell you what, did you see that pull, pull my boat? Yeah. I need to get out of your way here. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm cast, I cast right behind you. Look how thick that thing is from the top to the belly. Yeah, really... do you want to put it on the board and see how long it is? We can do that. that that's got to be a 20. Yeah, it's probably 20 inches, and I bet you that fish there is, is at least four and a half pounds. I say that's got to be four and a half. Let's throw it on the board real quick, and we'll see how long it is. So for a tournament, we'd have an identifier somewhere along the board. I usually strap it up here. Okay. But then what we would do, you take the fish. That's going to go right, yep, right at 20, like I thought. 20 inches. Yep, make sure the mouth is closed. Look how thick that fish is. So you would then take a picture of it. Yep. And it would immediately upload 20 inches, it would be real time, or do you do you get your data at the end of the turn? You take the picture and then submit. You can either submit it right then and there, or you can wait. Some people sandbag. Or you sneak in about 60 yeah. inches where the bass saw them at the last second. Yep. That's a beautiful fish, though. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's why Dale Hollow has a, a very special place in my heart. And I just, the first time I was on this lake, I fell in love with it. I think it was back in May a few years ago. There was, they were pre-spawn at that time, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. And gosh, it was just incredible. For someone who's from Nebraska, you do spend a lot of time in Kentucky, don't you? I spend more time in Kentucky than I do. I'm in Nebraska maybe just once or twice a year anymore. I'm in Kentucky and Tennessee, this part of the country, a lot. <sighs> Man. Did you get a bite? Right under the boat. Oh man. My line caught my rod right after him. I mean, that's why I don't ever keep my rods up front like that. <laughs> bad habit. Really bad habit. How many days a year do you think you spend on the water? Boy. I would say at least 300. <laughs> I'm not I'm not joking. You're like, how many days are there in a year? I know, if there's, there's 360 couple. something right. I'm on the water most throughout the year. It's every single day. Yeah. Oh my gosh! For at least a few hours. Maybe it's bigger than I thought. But it's what I do full time. So it's uh they say if you if you love what you do. Yeah. Woo! Absolutely. Oh look at him! Uh, oh, that's huge! 300 days a year. I bet you hold fishing license in at least eight states right now. Nine. Nine. Well, I've got annuals in nine. I just looked at this the other day. I think I've got 26 or 27 other ones that I've had just purchased licenses this year, <laughs> but nine annuals. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is crazy, yeah. This is about ready to happen right here. Now we've got to pull one more off of this spot. We've missed several. Uh-oh. You kind of called that, didn't you? Yep. This one ain't quite as big as the last one. Pretty aggressive, though. I tell you what, these fish, man, they school up on the edge of these grass mats. You can catch good quality fish and big numbers of fish out here in the wintertime. Who would think in December is, is one of my favorite months to fish out here at Del Hollow is December and January, February. Well, I'd say we make a few more casts. We got so many spots, you know, we're a little bit less mobile, but we can hit more than one spot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's a super nice deer taken by Hunter. It's his first buck ever and it was taken in Switzerland County, Indiana. Nice buck. Check out this enormous 21 inch smallmouth caught by Madden Mosqua. He's 12 years old from LaGrange and he caught this in the Cumberland River. Said best fight ever. Beautiful fish. Here we have Sandra Hyatt who went hunting for her very first time and took this beautiful turkey in Winchester, Kentucky. Congratulations. Check out this beautiful buck taken by Tim Nelson. This deer was shot with a 30-30 Winchester in Wayne County. Nice job. 
Check out this crazy rack on this beautiful buck, an 18 pointer taken by Mike Vinson. This deer was taken in Woodford County. Nice deer. Tyler Parton of Kenton County caught this nice crappie, his first one ever on Halloween morning. Nice job. Josie Mesmer from Campbell County is not gonna let a little cold weather keep her from saw guy fishing. She caught this beautiful fish on Bolts Lake. Check out this beautiful piebald buck that was taken by Jacob Stinson. This deer was taken in Wayne County, Kentucky. Here we have three-year-old Will Cox who is holding his older brother Cy's first squirrel. It was taken in Hancock County. Nice job. For all of the wintertime boaters out there, make sure that you wear that life jacket. Wintertime cold conditions can be very dangerous. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.